So hey gang, we're here today to talk about dredging versus berms. Why don't we just make the river deeper? Here is the cross section of what the river bed looks like. Add on top of it some of the protective berms that are in place right now. So if this is the bed of the river, we call this little point here and all rivers have them. It's called a thalwag. That's the deepest part of the channel and that's what runs full of water through the winter to keep the stream uh, alive and, and moving forward. We'll say that this is the built dike or berms that we have in the valley. And let's say that what we're looking for, just for argument's sake, is 300 square meters of area to help pass the volume in the river. We know that height times width equals the area. And when we multiply that by the velocity of the river, that equals flow. So let's say the river was moving at two meters per second. We could say that we have our 300 square meters times the velocity of two meters per second gives us 600 cubic meters per second of additional flow. So in order to achieve that, if we were going to make the bed of the river wider, the Red Deer River averages approximately 200 meters wide. So to achieve 600 cubic meters of extra volume at two meters per second, we need 300 square meters of area. So that means that we would have to excavate down the bottom of the riverbed 1.5 meters deeper, or about five feet, by an average width of 200 meters, the length of all the area that we would have to protect. Now that doesn't mean we'd have to go all the way from Knack Mine to East Cooley, the full 38 kilometers, but it's gonna be awfully close to make sure that the river continues to flow. We might even have to go a little further towards Dorothy to make certain that it planes out. One of the challenges with that dredging, as we all know the silt loads in the Red Deer River are pretty high, it's going to start to fill up until it finds its natural level once again. A very big undertaking, very impactful on the fishes and other aquatic life that's in the river, and we'd have an immense amount of material to get rid of or waste over that length of, of time. So what traditionally has been done in, in many, many rivers throughout North America and in fact the world is we add berms. And the math on, on those, or the arithmetic I guess is, is what it boils down to, is if we have to make another 300 square meters of area, our velocity is gonna be the same, we know that we can build on top of the existing dikes, make them a little wider, a little broader, and our material's gonna have to be 1.5 meters high, just like it was down here, and we'll say that it's 200 meters from side to side, that 1.5 meter slight of volume is created by this addition here, which is probably about 45 cubic meters on either side of fill that has to be added to the existing dikes. That compares to 300 cubic meters of excavation that would have to happen here. So 90 cubic meters versus excavating 300 cubic meters is a big difference and is a lot easier to build and doesn't have the impact of it silting back in and doesn't have the impact on the fishes and the aquatic life. So what we do is build on top of the existing dike or the existing river banks to create our dikes and create this area that we need to pass the high flow.